Hello, I'm John Vargo, Associate Editor of GIE. Uh, I'm Associate Professor of Medicine and Head of uh, Therapeutic Endoscopy at the Cleveland Clinic. I'm pleased today to have Dr. Uzma Siddiqui, uh, who is an Assistant Professor of Medicine at the Yale University School of Medicine. Uzma and colleagues have uh, uh, pr put together a wonderful study titled uh, EUS Guided FNA of Solid Pancreatic Masses a prospective randomized trial comparing 22 gauge versus 25 gauge needles. Uzma, thanks, thank you so much for coming today. Thank you for having me. Why don't you tell us a little bit about your study? Um, well, as you know, uh, EUS FNA has proved an important tool in diagnosing pancreatic malignancies. And prior studies have shown very high sensitivities between 71 to 90 percent in providing accurate diagnoses. But the previous studies um, lack data in terms of uh, which needle size to use. A variety of needle sizes have been uh, used in these studies and there's generally been a lack of consensus among endosonographers as to what needle to choose when you're performing FNA. It's essentially just uh, the dealer's choice and you know it's an arbitrary selection. I will agree with you. It's dealer's choice at our institution also, and you, I find some of the practitioners favor one over another, and, and I, uh, you know, there hasn't been a lot of science as to the choice up until this study. What was your primary outcome? Our primary outcome was to uh, directly compare 22 versus 25 gauge needles in terms of uh, diagnostic yield. And then secondary aims were to look at rates of complications, um, uh, things such as ease of use of the needle, um, needle malfunctions that required use of a, a new needle. Um, those were the aims we were looking at. And for, for di diagnostic uh, yield, you were you determined that to be a positive cytology on yes, the pancreatic it would mass? Yes, it would be positive for any diagnosis of malignancy. Um, things that we consider non-diagnostic were negative for malignancy, atypical or suspicious. Okay. And what did you find? Well, we found um, in our study, we enrolled 131 patients prospectively, um, and we randomized them to either having FNA with a 22 or 25 gauge needle. Um, we had two referral centers, three endosonographers, and we found that there was an overall diagnostic yield of 91.6%, um, and we had a variety of diagnoses, the majority being adenocarcinoma. We also had metastatic malignancies, neuroendocrine tumors, um, and a pseudopapillary tumor. But uh, interestingly enough, when you looked at the breakdown between the two groups, there was a slightly higher yield with the 25-gauge needle of 95.5% versus 87.5% with the 22-gauge. This wasn't statistically significant, but definitely there was a trend there. Um, we found there were no complications in any of the patients. Um, and just when you looked at in, uh, things such as ease of needle passage, needle malfunctions, um, and necessity to change the scope position depending on the needle you were using, those were actually all equal as well. well they were equal. Mm -hmm. One of the things that I've found with some of the, the smaller needle gauges is the uh, uh, sometimes a little more difficult to visualize those, those thinner needles. What did you find in your study? I will say that we did not specifically address that mm -hmm. question. In general, um, I think we found that it's pretty easy to visualize both needles, but that was not a question that we specifically uh, addressed. Okay. And I know you looked at the, the position of the FNA target is always a, is always a, a, a major a hurdle in some cases. And you looked at head versus b body and tail. Uh -huh. um, your thoughts, and again, it was, it was essentially equivalent. Your thoughts on our friend, the uncinate process, that's always the bane of our existence. Well, obviously, huh? yes, definitely. You're, when you're in the duodenum, a lot of torque on the scope, it's often more difficult to get the needle out. And, you know, the thinking might be, oh, a smaller gauge needle, like the 25 gauge, might be a little bit easier to push out of the scope and get into the tumor. However, in our study, we actually didn't find a difference. Mm. Um, and we lumped uncinate with head, so we didn't specifically right. leave it as its own group. But, you know, in terms of uh, location of the tumors and just, again, in terms of ability to pass the needle, the needle breaking or clogging or uh, needing to change position, which was specifically asked, there was no uh, difference between the two groups. Okay. Your, your group obviously is at the, at the forefront of expertise in FNA, but for those who may not do as many as, as you, uh, any recommendations at a 22 or over a 25, or would you say it'd be equivalent even in those, in those situations? 
Well, you know, originally our study in terms of calculating sample size, um, since there was a lack of published data, we assumed uh, to be clinically significant there might be a 25% difference in terms of yield between the two needle gauges. Obviously what we found was a lot less, 8%. So our study was a little bit underpowered and I think to make a more definitive recommendation of one needle over the other, you'd obviously need more patients. Having said that, now with our own published data, you know, originally we were using 22 gauge needles routinely, but now we have switched over to using 25 gauge needles. Very interesting. An uh, another comment, uh, training involvement, did that have a role in this study? Um, we actually didn't look at time of procedure, so that might, might have okay. been one thing, but um, the FNAs were all performed by the attending. Okay, I see. Uzma, I want to thank you very much for a, a very well done study and uh, thank thanks so much for taking the time with us today. No problem. Thank, thank you very you. much. Thank you.